Hi, my name is Tom from Genius Gecko, and this is Big Picture in 5 Minutes. In case you're wandering, lying somewhere in the beach, or maybe taking a hike through the mountains, or just enjoying your backyard, how the hell do you create markers and milestones in Big Picture? This is exactly what I'm going to tell you in this video. So let's dig right into that. Um, what we are looking at over here is a typical big picture project plan. And we currently have one milestone in this project plan. It's located right over here. And what I want to tell you today is how to create those milestones, when to use them, how to use them, and what is the best approach to actually having them in your project plan and not losing track of what's happening. So first of all, let's imagine that our task over here named development finalized um, wants to be a milestone. How do you take uh, the task and turn it into a milestone? Where there are two ways of doing that. So you can just click on the task, go into three dots and hit convert to milestone. That's like a longer way. And by the way, you need to have these editor slider checked. Uh, otherwise, this will not appear when you select an entry on the left side of the Gantt chart. The second way of doing that is just to right click on the task, so that's probably easier, and you will get the same kind of submenu over here. And you can also convert a task or any entry on the Gantt list to a milestone. And if you do that, it will change the shape to a milestone like shape, and then you got yourself a milestone. Now, what has happened in the background? What has happened to our in this case, uses story, Jira uses story in the background. Nothing really. Nothing really happened unless you have the setting turned on in Big Picture that is also marking that task as being a milestone in the um, Jira issue screen. So we can try to see if that works in our case. But if not, if you don't have this enabled, then basically nothing happened, happened nothing changed on the level of the JIRA ticket, which is obviously good because, uh, or, or bad actually, it, it, it can go both ways. So good because it doesn't mess up your JIRA data, um, bad, sometimes you want this information to be recorded on the level of the JIRA ticket. That's why if we look at my JIRA ticket development finalized, you will see that in the labels field, I have hashtag milestone now available. And that appeared here because I created a milestone in big picture. Basically, what's happening is it's just changing shape over here in big picture and nothing in particular is happening to this task in JIRA apart from that hashtag milestone information that is recorded by default in the labels field, although you can change it to something else. Right? So that's that's basically it. Now, if you want the task to be converted back to what it was before, you just go here and convert to task, and it will, of course, go back to being a standard entry on a Gantt. Of course, convert to task doesn't mean Jira task. It basically converts from milestone to task, and the task is a task, milestone, uh, epic, whatever you've changed it to, to being a milestone over here. Uh, so that's how it works. Now, another interesting thing that you can do with the milestone is, of course, to interact with everything that is around it. So if you want to connect the milestone with dependencies to something else, obviously you can do it. So it's, it, it behaves like any other entry on a Gantt. But the difference is that milestone is the single point in time entry, right? So it doesn't have a start and end date. It basically has just one date and because it's a, like a one day long task. So if I hover my mouse over this task, for example, you can see that on the left and right side of this task, so here and here, right, you have dates, start and end date. On the level of the milestone, you get only one date, which makes sense because it's a point in time. So that's one thing to remember. Another um, very interesting thing to consider is that when you have the milestone, you probably want this milestone to stay where it is, right? So this milestone might be connected with dependencies to other elements, but you don't want these dependencies to affect the placement in time of this milestone. So to take care of this, I recommend going to period mode and locking the milestone with the lock mode, right? Then you can see this lock over here next to the milestones. It means that it's not movable now. I can't move it manually and it will not also not be moved by any kind of dependencies that you will apply to it. And the last thing I want to mention uh, regarding milestones 
are markers. So what is a marker? Marker is something that you mark over here at the top above your timeline and it creates a line that is going through the whole project plan. Now, why are markers connected to milestones? They don't have to be, so you obviously you can use markers whenever you want to, but I personally very like the idea of having uh, the marker also at the same point where I have my milestones. Why? Let me demonstrate it. So currently I can't create any markers over here. There is one over here that is today, it's always visible, but if you want to work with markers you need to go here and enable them and then you will be able to create the markers over here. And I'll just say dev finalized, um, just like I have over uh, at the level of the milestone, and I will put uh, the marker over here as well. So what I did now is I created a marker that is basically duplicating the, duplicating the information that I have on the level of my milestone, but it serves a purpose. So look what happens when I scroll down. When I scroll down, my milestone disappears from view, right? And I have a very long, I can have a very long project plan over here. This one is not obviously long, but I could have several hundred, sometimes thousand tickets over here. And the milestones, they get hidden very easily. Get, they, they, they just disappear out of view when you scroll to another part of your project plan. But the marker will always be there, right? So be just because I have this marker over here, now I can always know that there is an important date and I know that there is a marker underneath it, uh, sorry, milestone. Last thing I want to show over here is that on the level of the info bar, there is a section that is strictly for milestones and this section allows you to quickly find the milestones that you have in your project plan. So you click on the element, it gets highlighted immediately. So this is this one. I click on the second one, it gets highlighted as well. It's this one. So it's a very quick way of finding your milestones if you have them in your project plan. And that's it. And that's it. So milestones and markers, very interesting things. If you want to learn more about these features, because I probably could add like two or more things regarding those, um, then of course, check out the services that we offer. Uh, you can sign up for a full blown out uh, training of Big Picture. You can also check out our free Big Picture video course that will take you into the big picture world kind of step by step and we also have a video training that is like a full uh, training of everything that big picture has to offer including our tips and tricks and uh, some very valuable information regarding how to configure the tool to the specific needs that you might have everything that is uh, related to what i've just said will be uh, available in the description of this video so if you're looking for any contact information or links check the description and this is where you will find it. And that's all. Thanks a lot for listening. See you in the next video.